Alright guys, I'm going to do a quick update here on the uh, 30 gallon nano. A um, couple changes have taken place. Um, got a couple new corals. Um, just kind of talk a little bit uh, about the system, a little bit about all the corals. Um, just do a quick update here. I'm um, actually going to be going out the door here in probably about 10-15 minutes. So, like I said, it's just going to be a quick update. I'll let you guys know where I'm at. I believe this is update number 8, if I'm not mistaken. Um, first of all, I do have the actinics off. Um, I, for some reason, this camera that I've got just... It's a high. It's one. Of the, uh, it's a Kodak high definition ZX1 little uh, SD camera, um, and the videos that I've been shooting with this have really not impressed me that much. Um, so I'm gonna try shooting this one with just the um, daylights on, no actinics, uh, and see if it comes out. See if it shows a little bit better for you. Um, but all right. uh, first of all. If you have been watching any of my videos, don't know if you can notice any of the changes, um, but I did yesterday when I was at my local fish store, the Coral Corral, uh, got a really, really nice piece of uh, SPS. It is actually a Monipora Digitata. Um, now this frag is roughly, I don't know, probably three to four inches and it's just branching um, from all angles uh, kind of see it there uh, picked that guy up for uh, 25 bucks um, piece of that will be going in my little uh, Pico um, SPS only reef that I'm doing um, probably within this month I'm gonna start that um, and then we've got the uh, the nuclear green with um, the orange sunburst, the anthid cluster right there. You can see uh, the pagoda cup. He's actually been doing rather well in this spot. He um, he does like this spot. Um, give you a look down the way there. The my clownfish guys. I really think they're gonna get ready to start spawning real soon. Um, the reason being, the last couple nights um, after the lights go out, I have been noticing them cleaning the side of this little rock right here um, and basically going through their mating rituals, or their spawning rituals, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm really thinking that they're going to start spawning here real soon, and I'm going to try to capture it on video if I can. If not, I'll eventually get them. Um, getting back to the corals, though. Um, you guys can see, I don't know if you guys can see that little colt coral right there. <laughs> there went a crab, that was funny. Um, little colt coral I did get from my local fish store. It was seven bucks on, attached to that rock. It was about a half an inch off the top of that rock. Now the thing's growing sideways. It's a couple inches long. It's, it's only been in the tank for maybe a month now. Um, but it's growing, it's growing rapidly actually. Um, I know that, uh, the leather corals seem to be the fastest growers uh, in these tanks um, so we'll see and then moving on down here to the big tongue coral this is the um, clownfish's host coral which I've um, kind of went over that a little bit in some past videos that I've made uh, but this is their uh, this is their pad right here they love this guy a um, couple feather dusters um, got the big trumpet coral um, Things doing really, really good. It's, uh, it's grown. I don't know. It ha the polyps grow. It seems to me that the polyps are growing larger, but the actual branching, I haven't seen any new branching or anything. So I, it, I know it's a slow growing coral. Um, so, but that's been in the tank since uh, two months after I first put it up. It's going on seven months now. Um, back behind that, underneath the crab, or the cleaner skunk, skunk cleaner shrimp there, see um, the uh, candy cane coral. It's back there. The thing's doing good. And then we've got um, the big uh, bird's nest coral, which uh, for all you that have been watching my videos, you know that this thing is just growing like a 
like almost like a weed. It's insane. Watch out there, Marlin. My uh, clownfish are Marlin and Coral. My kids named them from Finding Nemo. <laughs> Go figure. Um, anyways, the green bird's nest. Uh, then we've got some uh, sunburst uh, zoanthids, uh, green-eyed zoanthids, which are spreading like wildfires. Um, hammer coral, which the hammer coral seems to be doing pretty good. Um, it, do, it, it is a smaller piece. It's not a, it's not a large piece of um, hammer coral. It's um, basically a four-head with one split, making it five-head uh, piece of hammer coral. Um, it's, that's been in the tank in the system for I think a couple months now and it's uh, it's doing good it's uh, it is showing some growth on the inside I, for all of you that know how this hammer coral grows it's it's got a couple um, uh, I don't know three or four new spines coming up on it that are you can see the little um, tentacles and polyps starting to extend out of them which that's exciting uh, mushrooms some of a uh, little bit of my zinnia that I have there Big, big purple mushroom. I don't know if that's huge. It's uh, taking up pretty much the whole rock right there. He sits on funny. Um, sponge, uh, two brain corals there. And then if you look, you can see, oh, I'll just go around the back here in a minute. Um, one more cluster of, uh, I don't even know, something orange. Zoe is there. Um, go around, scoot around the back here. I'll show you my other new coral that I did get. Um, you guys can see the uh, green carpet anemone which he's always back here in the back and then I've gotten this new uh, branching tree leather and stuck it here in the back going all the way around the uh, rock now um, with all the coral uh, try to enclose this rock structure with coral pieces because um, I'm pretty much ran out of room in my rock structure for for any more coral unless I start gluing it to my rocks, which I do not like doing. Um, <clears throat> I discussed the reasons why in previous videos. Um, it's, I like to move my rock if I feel like it, and with coral stuck to the rock, it limits you on what you can actually do with the rock structure. Um, but, oh, and one more big change. No, I thought this was pretty awesome. They've been growing forever, but you can see my one mangrove shoot finally popped some leaves out, which is, uh, they've been in, that's been a long time. Those guys are extremely slow growers. It actually amazed me how long it took it to get leaves. Um, let's see if we can't get a little video looking down in the system here. Let's see that um, Montepora digitata there. Um, this is not the encrusting like the Capricornus. Um, these are branching. It's actually a, a branching Montepora digitata is what it is. Um, just trying to give you guys a view down through the top. I always like watching it. Looks neat being able to look down at it. That's not coming out very good. Alright guys, but like I said, I just wanted to do a quick update here. Um, no, actually, you know what? One more thing that I want to talk about, see if anybody has had any previous experience. Um, emerald crabs, I know what they are. They're usually green um, or like a, uh, I believe a tanny, like dark brownie color. Guys, I have not added any new rock besides this one piece of, of cult coral to the tank um, with that one little small rock. And I don't, uh, a week and a half ago, I was sitting here and um, like most reefers, uh, extreme reefers like me anyways, um, I know everything inside and out in the tank. I know uh, just everything about the system, so I notice new things when they happen. Uh, immediately I notice new creatures, new critters, uh, just all the time. Well, I noticed a little crab. To me, I'm in Florida, this guy looked like a baby stone crab. Okay guys, he's in. The, he was living in this rock right here. Uh, until the other day when I captured him. The reason that I captured him, I saw him one time, didn't see him again. Next day I was kind of cleaning through the tank and noticed um, he had, it, at the time I didn't notice, but what he more, um, he uh, morphed, shed his outer skin into new shell. Um, and I thought I could get it, tried to get it, ended up being just, uh, you know, his old shell. 
Um, anyways, long story short, I saw him. I was sitting here uh, two days ago, guys. Saw him. He was actually munching on this cluster of the uh, nuclear green and uh, sunburst zoanthids. Um, he's actually eating them, eating the polyps, guys. Couldn't believe it. Um, so obviously, quickly, I reached right in the tank, uh, snatched a hold of him. Uh, was thinking about just ditching him. I could, I could just go throw him in the in the river right behind my house. I live right on the canals here. Uh, so I was thinking about doing that. Decided not to. So what I did with them, guys, is I put them in my refugium. Okay. I haven't seen him since I've been since I put him in here, um, but he is in there somewhere. Um, I figured I could leave him in there. You know, he's not going to hurt anything. There's no coral or anything down there. Um, help eat a little bit of the waste. Not really sure what kind of crab it is, guys. It was a white crab with uh, brown tipped claws. Uh, if any of you guys are familiar with stone crabs, that is what they kind of look like when they're babies. So that's what I suspected it was. How it got in my system, I have no idea. Uh, tank's been up and running for seven, eight months now, or six or seven months. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, six or seven months now. Uh, I have never, ever seen the crab in the tank before, so. I'm leery as to whether, may, uh, whether or not maybe he came with uh, that rock with the cold coral attached to it. Um, but if you got anybody else has had any similar crab experiences in their tank, um, me, I figured it would just be a crab like an emerald crab and be totally reef safe. Um, I was wrong. Glad I caught him before he did too much damage. Um, I don't think he'll be able to do any damage down here in the refugium, though. Um, Let's see, let's kind of show. This is uh, the Seacomb 100 skimmer. Um, I've I've actually had really good luck with this skimmer um, ever since I modified it. Um, you can see I don't know if you can make that out or not, but it's just brewing bubbles right now, uh, and it fills it up. It's actually filled up all the way to here right now. I've got it taped all the way down to here, so it's in a week, four days. So it is skimming some some jism, gizm out of the, gunk out of the tank. Um, I'm gonna, gonna, right now I'm gonna try to start making a uh, slide in, slide out um, stand enclosure for this stand here so it's not open like this. I couldn't make up my mind what I was gonna do with it, um, whether I was gonna leave it open or close it, um, or just put a you know, black sheet up curtain around it and whatnot. I've decided I'm gonna enclose it and with a wood structure but anyways guys just want to give you a quick update let you know what's going on with the tank um, I think that this video will come out better with the actinix off it looks like it is more of the colors are coming out in this camera um, I'll kind of just give you an idea of what I'm talking about here if you haven't seen any of my other videos uh, I think the actinix lights on with this camera uh, mm, I don't know I don't know really what it does it to me that maybe the corals just seem like they come out a little bit better without the tenix on I'm not sure but anyways guys any comments uh, questions concerns um, hit me out guys like my video subscribe got lots more things coming up I'm gonna be starting a little uh, five gallon pico reef uh, with uh, built-in sump and refugium uh, so the main display tank is gonna be about 3.1 gallons um, gonna be starting that within the month um, going to go step by step with that, um, installing the baffles, uh, it's going to be strictly solely SPS tank only, I'm going to frag SPS's and trade them, sell them, stock them, whatever I may do with them, I'm not sure, but anyways guys, hit me up, subscribe if you like my videos, thanks.